Excuse me, all the host permission given. Last session of the day, I know it is very tiring for many people, but this is not going to be heavy uh, some technical talks. Uh, the theme for this session is recollections of major outreach projects which happened in the uh, last uh, I we first thought we will do for ASI 50 years, last 50 years, but then we thought that uh, let's do it for the uh, post independence era. What are the major outreach projects which happened? And we uh, invited uh, several uh, people to focus on different areas. Uh, I will explain how the, the session is structured as, as the session progresses. Uh, so first, our first speaker is uh, Ramesh Kapoor. Uh, many of you many, uh, know him. He is a very senior historian of science. So Ramesh Kapoor is going to talk about uh, overall the perspective about outreach uh, in the last uh, 75 or so, so years. So Kapoor ji, you permission diya hai. You can share your screen. Okay. Thank you. You can see my uh, screen full? Yes, we can see. Okay. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, the topic, uh, the title of my talk is uh, after a very famous movie, but it, I think it's relevant here. Uh, the heavens in our life, the subject of astronomy fascinates us all. We not only wish to learn more, we also want to share the joy it gives us with one and all. We all carry that germ. Me too, and I here I am to share the story of that joy with you. Because the dream come true when the UPSO offered a research scholarship in June 1971. Dr. S.D. Sinwell was the director of those days. In a wonderful campus with telescope houses, there also was this tiny observatory with a six inch Carl's Ice Equatorial. Uh, it catered to the visitors on specific days. It was during the tourist season in May and June, the campus saw them in large numbers. Some of us would step into the tiny observatory and love to show the sky and answer their questions. Many a time seeing the 22 inch reflector or the 104 centimeter size, uh, now the Sampurna telescope, after it was installed in 1972, their jaws would drop and some would exclaim, science ne itni tarakki karli. Conversing with the visitors affirmed the thought that we need to keep telling the people about the cosmos and how we are connected with it lifelong. In March, 1974, I joined the Indian Institute of Astrophysics. Dr. M.K. Venu Bapu was a great inspiration. He was a bit disappointed seeing me switching over to theory, but he encouraged me. Come September 2008, no reports to write anymore. I became a free bird and an amateur astronomer again. And this is heaven on earth. On the left is the library building. And in the intervening period, whenever there arose a chance or occasion, I too worked to take astronomy to the people. I fulfilled that aim. In the initial days, Dr. J.C. Bhattacharya was the major force in this matter. I have been involved in this through lectures, articles, TV interviews, exhibitions, correspondence and conversations with students and people, sharing pictures and literature, the open days, radio talks, filmmaking, metro showers and eclipse watch as a lone wolf and as a group member. In March, 1985, I was assigned the task of developing an astronomy museum at the Kodak Canal Observatory and finish it within two weeks the library, the workshop, and the carpentry at Bangalore, and almost every section at Kodai Canal joined hands and we finished it in time. Uh, mm -hmm. On display were a few old astronomical instruments from the Madras Observatory Times, astronomical photographs, and the pictures of the past astronomers, directors. The entrance opened into a solar section with illustrated information. 
And this is the Mitchie Smith uh, Hall, where the Astronomy Museum uh, has uh, come up. And this is one sample of the exhibits. Uh, in the compound in a corner, we installed a grating. It was served by a siderostat to form the colorful solar spectrum on a screen at a suitable distance. The Astronomy Museum was inaugurated by Professor M. G. K. Menon in April 1985. Over the years, it has proved very popular with the visitors to the observatory. As I see in the IA website, it has got a nice facelift. Every 20th, 28th February, since 1986, the National Science Day has been celebrated in the Institute with great enthusiasm. Hundreds of students from nearby and outstation schools and colleges accompanied by their teachers visit the campus, are given popular lectures, a quiz, and are shown around the campus, the optics lab, etc. Also shown are short films to communicate the important achievements in astronomy. On display would be a dem demonstration model of the indigenous 2.34M Venu Bapu telescope. The public response has always been very encouraging, as you can see it here. And during the 96th Indian Science Congress in Shillong, we had a stall there. I gifted demonstration models of the 2.34 Venu Bapu telescopes to the physics department, Punjabi University and the Jawaharlal Nehru Planetarium, Bengaluru. A 7.5 centimeter refractor was gifted to the then Astronomy Association of the Regional Engineering College, Allahabad, now the Motilal Nehru National Institute of Technology, Allahabad, Prayagraj. In 1998, the Institute proposed and got a tableau created on behalf of the Ministry of Science and Technology for the Republic Day Parade on 26 January, 1999. The theme depicted the evolution of observational astronomy in the last millennium from temples to modern telescopes in India. We showcased the replica of the 12 zodiacal pillars of the Sringeri temple, a model of Maharaja Savai Jaisingh's Vedshala, and a scale model of the upcoming two meter optical telescope since named the Himalayan Chandra telescope. And here is just one view. 10 years later, I created another tableau to be featured in the Republic Day Parade of 26 January 2009 on behalf of the DST. The tableau highlighted the present scenario in uh, astronomy in India. It displayed models of the uh, VBT building and of a radio interferometric telescope to represent the GMRT, along with a running slideshow of the astronomical images. Here is an image of that. Transits of planets across the disk of the sun are among the most fascinating phenomena in solar system. At IIA, we organized public viewing of the transits of Mercury on 6 November 1993 and on 7 May 2003. Uh, here is a uh, view. I hope you can see the tiny dot near the center of the image of the sun. Uh, we are among the fortunate ones to have lived and experienced the transits of Venus on 8 June 2004 and on 6 June 2012. The transits gave rise to a widespread excitement and scientific activity of great magnitude. The IIA campuses and the observatories placed themselves for the observations and public viewing. And here is one uh, view of that. Uh, in, on the slightly right of the center are uh, celestats, and on the left is a, a tent where the image of the sun uh, was directed. And this is the reaction of the uh, newspapers. And uh, in the 2012 transit of Venus, we did the same arrangement. And this is an image of that. And we have also done a few new brochures of IIA and including the Himalayan Chandra telescope. We also celebrated Indian uh, International Year of Physics 2005. So we made a, we developed a plaque and a calendar and calendar had images taken by Swara Ravindranath at the Venu Bapu Observatory. And uh, we also developed greeting cards. And uh, this is 2001 X in NGC 5291, uh, taken in March 2001 with the Himalayan Chandra telescope. We did two films in 16 mm format on the observatories and on the 1980 solar eclipse expedition to Jawalgera in Karnataka. The films were later transferred to the VHS format with commentaries by Dr. M. K. Venu Bapu and J.C. Bhattacharya. These were played at Vigyan Bhavan, New Delhi, during the IAU General Assembly in November 1985. The films have some rare footage of S. Chandrasekhar and Homi Bhava while on visit to the Kodai Canal Observatory in 1961 and 1964, respectively. 
this is a screenshot from that film and I library doesn't have uh, an image of this. And there's no better occasion than an eclipse for outreach. The solar eclipse of uh, 16 February, 1980 was a great awakener post independence. This caused an unprecedented excitement among people from all walks of life. The later eclipses were no less exciting. Here are a few images from the IIA camps of the eclipses of 1980, 1995, and 2009. And uh, this is an image of the tall uh, 70 feet steel tower, which you can see here. And in front, you can see the strengths of the uh, tents. And this is Dr. Menu Bapu uh, taking a morning uh, view of the entire camp. And at, uh, at the bottom of the, that uh, tower, uh, there was a, uh, their observatory for the flash uh, spectrum they wanted to take. And this is the result of the Hosur camp uh, observations. And, uh, and after the eclipse was over, there, there was great excitement to talk um, uh, about uh, how people have felt about it. Here you see Dr. Venu Bapu, Professor Rajesh Kochar, and Dr. J.C. Bhattacharya, extreme right. And this is a view of the Neemkathana camp of IIA uh, during the eclipse of 24 October, 1995. And there also we reached out. So IIA gifted a 7.5 centimeter refractor to GN Modi Higher Secondary School, Neemkathana. In their uh, ground, we had the camp. And that was uh, done after the great Indian eclipse on 24 October, 1995. And in, on, during the eclipse of 22 July 2009 uh, at Varanasi, uh, Dr. Uh, Devi was our host. And uh, here in the image, you can see Dr. Devi uh, Prasad uh, Chaudhary uh, on, on extreme left. I was involved in the inclusion of footage on the Venu Bapu Observatory in a film by the Ministry of Human Resources and Development on the winds of science covering 50 years of Indian science. It was telecast by Doordarshan in August, 1998. In 2006-7, again, I participated in the uh, making of a film on IIA. And for astronomical observations, a telescopic device was used in India in 1618, within a decade of its invention. This is to celebrate 400 years of the telescope uh, in India. So this is connected with the tale of two great comets of November 1618 that were observed also from India by the Mughal Emperor Jahangir and independently by the Jesuit father Kirwitzer who used the telescope to view these from Goa. So Hello. Goa, not Gujarat. So uh, first, uh, two, two minutes. Okay, sure. I'm coming to the end. Uh, so with ASI and the Association of Friends of Astronomy at Goa, there was a celebration of the 400th anniversary of the telescope in India. And uh, the, on uh, 11 November 2018, at the Marina Beach in Panaji, uh, the public viewing um, of uh, the sky was organized by the AFA. And here you can see Dr. Sri also in the image. So I have been writing uh, articles for newspapers. And sometimes uh, I, uh, I, I'm interviewed on the new uh, TV channels also. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, any sorry, acknowledgements I must show. I, I, I. Any questions from the audience? Yeah. Actually, uh, before it, I ask anyone, I, I had a question. So you showed these two tableaus uh, which uh, were in the Republic Day Parade. Are yes. these the only two instances of astronomy featuring in the Republic Day Parade? Yeah, as far as I remember, yes. Okay, we'll uh, I will come back to you uh, after all the talks uh, in the open session. Uh, let's go to the next speaker. Okay. Our next speaker is uh, uh, BS. Uh, sorry, Priya Hassan, who is going to talk about outreach from the university sector. Priya, uh, Kabul, if you can stop sharing, then uh, Priya can start. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, just a minute. I hope you can see my slide. Is my slide clear? Yes, yes. We, can, we can see that. Yeah. 
So thanks, Aniket, and thanks, Professor Kapoor, for starting off the talk on astronomy outreach. And thanks, I'd be talking now about astronomy outreach, basically from the university sector and um, some of the issues. So what you can see on the right over here is uh, this is at uh, Ragapur Observatory, which is close to Hyderabad. There's a terrace where we were having a public viewing session. Here you can see the, the telescope of Delhi University, again, the terrace. And uh, I'll talk about some of the work being done by universities. So just as a, just to, um, uh, as a short history thing, uh, again, it starts off with Calcutta, the first, uh, I mean, when did astronomy start in universities in India? It has a very, you know, old history since a long time, much before any of the institutes started. So you had Presidency College in 1817, which started off with Astro, and which is now Presidency University. Calcutta University already started it in 1857, Allahabad University in 1887, BHU in 1916, and then the Nizamiya Observatory here in Hyderabad was started in 1901, and Usmania University in 1917, Delhi University not too, I mean, quite soon after that, which is 1922. So you can see we have quite a you know good history of astronomy in universities. And if you just check, what about the teaching of astronomy in universities? So Usmania University for a very long time has been the only university in the country which has a master's course in astronomy as well as in astrophysics. They're two different streams. And otherwise, in most universities, astronomy is just part of the MSc physics course, where you have uh, astronomy as an elective paper, one or two courses per semester, which includes things like sun and solar systems, stellar galactic, um, extragalactic, GR, cosmology, etc. And some of these universities also have set up labs and practical courses, uh, you know, on binary stars, on proper motion. In uh, Raipur, for example, they use simulated lab, the clear thing. There are some virtual lab things. Some of them do have telescopes of their own. So with that, they do conduct some kind of uh, you know, lab activities where people actually do some observations. And so now if you actually check the list, this is not an exhaustive list, but essentially the list of uh, universities which have astronomy courses. I'd start off with Aswani University. Then you have Nanded, which has it, Tejpur, Kozinkeri, Raipur, University of Delhi, Kochi, Kolkata, or Kolkata, Silchar, Kottayam, Gorakhpur University, Udaipur, Pune, Srinagar, Jadavpur, Calicut, North Bengal, Siliguri, Pondicherry, Tirupati, and a whole bunch of other universities which have started astronomy courses as part of their physics courses. Though Astro Osmani University is the only one which still has a dedicated astro department, just an astro department. Now, what are the basic challenges? Since I'm speaking from on behalf of universities, what are the basic challenges that are faced by universities in doing outreach work? So the first big biggest problem is the lack of special staff dedicated for outreach, right? In the university, you do not have anybody who's specifically employed to do outreach. Yeah, everybody obviously has to do their teaching and research, and outreach is part of the additional things they would do. Other than that, obviously, we have a good amount of a teaching load. The official UGC requirement is 16 hours for assistant professors per week. And often assistant professors, like even me, I often teach often more than 16 hours per week, depending on requirement. And then the other issue being lack of funds, specifically for outreach. So actually, to be on a fair ground, what I did is for this talk, I set up a Google form, which I shared through Ayuka, through ASI, as well as through my social media platforms to actually uh, request universities and colleges to tell me about the outreach activity they do so that I don't miss out on universities, because often there could be universities who are you know, actively doing work but are not mentioned. And therefore, what we were focusing on was what are the kind of science outreach activities these universities do? And uh, do they actually collaborate with individuals, universities or institutes uh, for these activities? What has been the impact of these activities? And what support would they like from the astronomy community in these activities? And obviously any other comments. So I have about 21 entries which I have. So the rest of my talk will be based on the input I got from the 21 entries. So the typical outreach education activities done by universities is obviously there's for general public. They often have an annual exhibitions, science day programs, stargazing programs. Osmani University has a foundation course since 2017. They also conduct meteor shower observations, which are sent to the IMO, asteroid hunt uh, programs, solstice days. Some of them also host astro clubs in which students, even from other departments as well as from the city can join them. Some of them do work with schools and often it is event-based. 
So, you know, you could do it on, say, the 2019 solar eclipse or the lunar eclipse, zero shadow days, workshops for school teachers. There's been lots of work even with even in our university, in Maulana Azad, we've been doing with Professor Desh Pandey on the Swan Antenna. We had students who went for training. And then for their own students, they have their annual seminars, as well as some of the students can go and volunteer, say, at Ayuka, NCRA, or any of the other institutes, and come back, learn some software, do some projects, UGPG too. And some interesting ones is, for example, Gorakhpur University had done one in 2017. That was the year when DST had put Science Day. The theme was Science and Technology for Specially Abled. And they centered it around uh, Stephen Hawking to increase awareness as well as, uh, you know, uh, importance of that. Some of them do have Ask Us about podcast events, school visits, science centers. Um, good example of GMRT, though it doesn't fall into universities, but since Divya gave me this feedback, is that they have, you know, done a lot of work in the 231 villages in that area where you could have weekly slots where students visit the GMRT as well as see the telescope and do various things. Some of them are based on events like Man on Moon, Apollo, EHT, etc. Now, what we have been doing is specifically, I'll now talk a little bit about the pandemic. During the pandemic, we, uh, we work as a team, me and SN Hassan. So what we did is with OAD, with the Astronomy for Development um, uh, Office, we actually had two projects. One is Astronomy from Archival Data and one is Astro Sprint, which is still an ongoing project. And you can see in this the kind of coverage which you got worldwide because it was online. So people could join from anywhere. And we had a very good coverage of people. And what we basically did is we did virtual teaching via online uh, Zoom sessions. We had to develop the website, maintain it, social media through Telegram, email. There was, uh, we had a variety of speakers, obviously not just us, but we had Mark Taylor, who's done TopCat, Luisa Ribul from IPAC, Bruno Merrin from ESA. Deborah Baines is also from ESA. We have Tim Hamilton, Ajit Timbhavi, Avinash Deshpande, Sushan Konar. So we had a whole set of speakers who also helped us in building the thing so that, you know, we could cover broader set of topics and, and things like that. And we also taught students tools, which were things like Python, AstroPy, TopCat, Vivo tools. And they used Gaia data, SDSS data, Kepler data, Magnetars Pulsar data, Galaxy Morphology, HST data, et cetera, to actually study certain science cases. So the first phase was where we actually had these Zoom sessions for four months from August to November. And after that, people chose their projects. They went in for, and after that, they presented their projects in February. So we had about 1,000 students from 25 countries all over the world who were participating. There are about 80 videos already online available and there's still a lot of active participation. As a sequel to this, we have workshops, Enterprise Discovery Next Generation. And uh, now our YouTube website has a whole bunch of all these videos. Along with that, we could do a lot of other sessions, for example, for Zero Shadow Day, for International Day of Light, for observing with uh, remote telescopes. This is at the Las Cumbres Observatory. For highlighting citizen science projects, we had 10 sessions on that. We had a big data workshop and we had various popular talks from various people which covered that. And uh, now since I'm co-chair for Women in Astronomy, IAU, so we even have training programs for women in IAU along with panel discussions. So in principle, there is a lot that universities actually can do and do do. And like, especially like I even mentioned in the pandemic also, they actually did a big this thing. But based on uh, what people told me, here is my list of wish list. Obviously, the first thing is funding. Funding is good to have. The other thing is support from the astronomy community, IAU, IUCA, ASI, POAC. So what they would like is something like a year long planning of events. If you'd had a database of events where you describe events, suggestions for observations, possible pamphlets, experimental activities, some kind of experts who can del deliver a series of lectures on that, networking and communication at the national level so that you know everybody can access things. Some of them would like telescopes, basic models, some kind of resources, experts, training, right? some funding. And then some of them, um, you would like interaction with scientists because often the university students do not know what they can do. They would like some kind of interaction. So even if it's not offline, at least it can be online. And uh, uh, I mean, part of this is also my ideas, but uh, so ASI, LOC, POAC should, there, there's been lots of appreciation about what POAC has been doing during the ASI meetings of having talks in the local area near each ASI meeting, as well as, uh, especially when it is in smaller cities. 
And POAC can actually act as the agency for identifying interesting material for outreach and its use network, get it translated like they've already been doing that. And this database can be accessed by people to actually uh, plan their events because many of them do not know what are the events they can do. And uh, so now this has some of my- Last two minutes. Yeah, yeah. So this has some of my last uh, possible suggestions uh, of possible action for Mayuka, ASI. This could also be from the mega projects, outreach offices if they have funding as well as CSR help. So obviously can material be loaned to them with resources, with their active web pages where they can get the data, like I said, database of experts, events, things like that. POEC social media handles should cover all outreach activities of ASI members and universities, not just POEC. Exposure camps have been appreciated. Another thing is associate membership is being soon hopefully offered to planetaria, and probably it can also be offered to faculty or students interested in astronomy without publications as associate members, networking of this group and funding and assistance. And I would like to finally end with this, with this final note of mine, is that universities essentially is where our country, the masses of our country, they get educated in universities. And therefore for science and astronomy to be in our social temper, we have to obviously work at university level because that's where we are going to get the maximum reach to our people and we can actually get the maximum effect, right? So thanks, I'll end with that. Yeah, thanks Aniket. Uh, one question from my side, uh, you mentioned Usmania has been uh, active uh, and offering MSc course uh, for very long. So uh, were, were there any major outreach campaigns run by Usmania University Department? Yeah, so actually some of those pictures which were there are, are from Osmania only. I didn't have the time to do it, but they have been doing the regular, uh, like I said, the foundation course they do, they do visits to the observatory, then even event-based things in the sense when there's an eclipse, solar eclipse, lunar eclipse, uh, zero shadow days, things like that. They've been doing that, yeah. And at present, but uh, historically, so as I know, historically, they did a lot at Halley's Comet. Probably Professor Kapoor will know better, but I think 1986, that's when they had done a lot for Halley's Comet. Uh, unfortunately, I was not there at that time and I could not find material on that. But yes, they did do that. But uh, they did have the issue of the problem of teaching load. So there was obviously limitation to how much of outreach they could do. But yeah, Professor Kapoor would know about Halley's Comet, 86. I think they did a lot at that time. Any other question? If no, then we'll go to the next speaker. Next speaker is... Uh, Dr. B. S. Shailaja, uh, you know her, uh, she was with Bangalore Planetarium earlier, and she's going to talk about outreach by the uh, planetarium. Shailaja, you can share your screen. Thank you. I hope you can see my screen. Are you able to see my screen? Yes. Okay. Uh, so I first of all thank POEC for giving me this opportunity to talk about the planetariums and the outreach activities. And uh, it gives me, of course, great pleasure because I have served in the planetarium for more than two decades. <clears throat> uh, making uh, outreach possible in all possible modes. So 50 years ago, um, of course, uh, well, I was asked to talk about how it has evolved in the last 50 years. So our opening balance was just one. There was only one planetarium at uh, Calcutta. And uh, uh, by virtue of its uh, position adjacent to the famous Victoria Memorial, I think it attracted a lot of uh, tourists. And uh, uh, I, whoever went to Calcutta made it a point to visit the planetarium. And the thrill was seeing the familiar names like Aries and Taurus in the sky. It was just limited to that those days, I think. And uh, all the shows were live. I suppose uh, you people can catch what I mean by live, uh, because now if you go to any planetarium, you will see the recorded shows. Those days they were live and uh, it continued to be so. So 50 years is a long period so that people have decided to write a history of the planetariums in India. 
So you can see a report published in the Indian Journal of History of Science. So it suffices to say that about the evolution of planetarium history, but now I'll concentrate more on the uh, show production and other outreach activities that have evolved uh, with these uh, number of planetariums uh, increasing all over India. So shows and other means of outreach. So target has been always the school children. School children, uh, uh, because as part of school education, they were brought to the planetarium. Even today, many people think that uh, planetariums are meant only for school children, unfortunately. And very rarely we see uh, adults coming uh, for time pass. But it's good that uh, families have started coming to the planetarium in the excuse of showing it to the children. So the pioneering efforts uh, I should point to Delhi because uh, they made use of the opportunity of uh, so many schools visiting and uh, came up with uh, many programs there. Uh, I should remember here Colonel Singh and Dr. Nirupama Raghavan, who uh, initiated many activities uh, for the school children, making them enjoy astronomy and involve them in uh, uh, looking at the sky, uh, observing celestial events, and so on. So in fact, that trend has continued even today. And we also have to remember Dr. Ratnishti at this moment. And uh, all other planetariums which have come up later also have picked up this thread. And uh, we have come up with uh, various activities for school children in all planetariums. I will be able to give only a glimpse of that. And at uh, Baroda and uh, Jaipur, Dr. Eji Kulkarni also had taken some active role. Dr. Gopal Swami at uh, Chennai. And I had heard that uh, Dr. Devdas, whose name we have known as a telescope manufacturer, also had a uh, lot of activities for children in the early days of his uh, telescope uh, making workshops. And uh, this way, they catered to so many um, age groups, not small children, but even uh, college students, up to the level of college students. So another important thing that automatically happened in this process was that uh, planetarium started sheltering amateurs. So amateur astronomers joined hands with the planetariums for all outreach activities and uh, even introducing telescopes uh, to kids. And Colonel Singh, I should remember because he introduced the Olympiads and uh, the children trained by him uh, back the first ever uh, gold medal and silver medal for uh, astronomy Olympiads. I, I remember that uh, subsequently he had come to Bangalore Planetarium with uh, Soma Krai Chaudhary and Piyush Pandey. We had a small informal meeting there as to how this can be uh, transferred to all over the country through the planetariums. And I think uh, we prepared a uh, question bank and conducted the exam for a few years and so on. But subsequently, Humi Baba Center took it over because the number of students was simply unmanageable for the small planetariums. 50 years ago, who was the authority to speak about celestial events? That is a very interesting thing. It was the Positional Astronomy Center in Calcutta, which was under the Department of Meteorology. So any small note that you would see in the newspapers would be from them giving the timings of the eclipses, especially solar and lunar. Any other celestial event, they were, uh, nobody was ever bothering about it. And I don't think the newspapers really cared to publish them. But subsequently, a miracle happened. That was in the year in 1980 when astrologers took over the responsibility. And some of you may remember that particularly on the day of the 1980 eclipse, the whole country was under a curfew, which was worse than the lockdown situation we had two years ago. Um, uh, Ramesh Kapoor presented the positive side of it because only a small percentage of the enthusiasts visited the eclipse camp. But the rest of the country was under curfew with all flights canceled or trains canceled. Fortunately, now we have a turning point and uh, that is, whenever there is a celestial event, they all call up the planetarium. Not, they don't go to the astrologers anymore. And uh, that's a positive note that I should, uh, because it could be an eclipse. It could be a planetary conjunction. It could be an asteroid coming down, or it could be even the launch of a satellite by ISRO. 
they all call the planetarium to get to know the details i think this is a positive development that we have to appreciate and one of the things uh, nehru planetarium did in 1985 was to invite the delegates of the iau uh, to visit i think that was the first time i even i visited a planetarium and uh, i just did not know what was happening and uh, uh, it was a nice uh, 40 minutes uh, uh, event that we had there and uh, i never knew that i would be back in the planetarium much later otherwise i would have taken care to see further details there but nirupama was uh, great she explained everything later when i met her and uh, i felt bad that in 1985 i did not take that much of interest in knowing about the planetarium this is the uh, projector which uh, creates that marvel of the night sky which reproduces i chose this particular picture because this is the first generation equipment that all the planetariums in india had say 15 years ago even this one uh, is not working in our campus anymore this was the day before we dismantled it uh, to make way for the new system of projector digital projectors so i have to mention about professor vishweshwara also because i am going to talk about the show production and other things which is very vital in attracting students to the planetarium so the challenge is the range of visitors we have dignitaries like professor s chandrashekar coming and watching the show and the other dignitary i have shown here i don't have to mention the name all of you can recognize him i had to mention the name of chandrashekar because some of you may not be able to recognize him at all and uh, not just the school children even these people have started coming now so we have to cater to their needs so the script has to be very powerful so that we cater to all levels of visitors uh, the first challenge all the planetariums had whether it is it was nirupama or vishweshwara or whoever started the uh, first work at the planetarium was mastering the equipment which recreates the sky so well how to make use of the best from that and therefore scripting a show was very important <clears throat> and more important was creating the visuals we did not have any digital support the only support we had are slide projectors and it is at this context i want to re recall the live shows in calcutta planetarium which was going on till say to 2016 or so i happened to be there in 2016 or early or two years before that i think i was mm. surprised by the show that was being given by a lady i unfortunately have forgotten her name she was giving a live show she had the numbers of uh, distances to planets diameters of the planets both in kilometers and miles by heart and she was managing a slide projector with hand because it's a circular seating arrangement and she had to turn it by 180 degrees so that everybody could see this slide and that she was managing simultaneously talking without letting people know that she was doing all the things by herself i was amazed because i also have given live shows later or earlier for, for 20 years 25 years but i had this wonderful projector at my disposal which could show eclipses which, which could show comets and the other things and then i didn't have to move the slide projector myself so i really appreciate the effort of those uh, people uh, who have now made way for uh, digital projectors uh, in the last uh, two years even in calcutta so the efforts to reach all levels as i mentioned we need to have very good visuals animations and movies that is when we had to uh, go to the institute like iia to borrow visuals from them and we have to have a local touch for all the scripts because we cannot uh, show mythology from uh, some sumerian country or whatever and music of course has to be indian and only then it goes it will be appreciated by the people so it's the, here that professor vishweshwara exploited the local talent talent i will give you two examples of the local talent all right this was a special program we had organized under the stars on 31st december 1999 under the uh, planetarium sky a beautiful music program and those who attended this program 
but i still remember the melody and the beautiful night sky they had above their head at that uh, yeah, the last two minutes yeah so these are some examples of uh, the uh, local talent i was mentioning and uh, then we move from slide projectors to video projectors so we had to have an updates etc and of course we have beautiful exhibition halls and uh, science park which was barren like this became like this this was also a new idea which was initiated by professor vishweshwara and which was subsequently uh, used by other planetariums also wherever they had place to do this and then we came up with uh, many educational activities uh, projects for post graduates even kolkata chennai and delhi had started these programs but vishweshwara came up with this wonderful idea called the seed sow and reap program science in early education science over weekends for high school children and reap for college students so this is uh, his idea and um, uh this program re program perhaps you all know some of the beneficiaries may be already sitting there it produced very good teachers very good researchers and even good journalists there are some science journalists who have uh, been trained in this program and they have produced very good science uh, reports and uh, these were the three people who started the program in 95 96 and the astronomy astrophysics part was uh, taught by me and um, uh then we have uh, several outreach activities which are being uh, continued forward with uh, the new digital setup we are able to do many more things and we are able to reach this uh, and i i can't uh, help mentioning dr ratnashree and her enthusiasm to make it uh, uh, to the other uh, planetariums in the north indian hindi belt i should say because the language is very important here so the other outreach activities uh, uh demonstration models which we have we have made some 50 models which are uh, lent to schools they show it in their schools and uh, several lakhs of children visit them and uh, this is another one and then the science park concept of science park is now going into all uh, schools also and the celestial events we have used as uh, avenues for education like the eclipses total partial or annular and of course the transit of venus in 2004 and 2012 we had a very um, uh, grand uh, uh, reception for that and this i want to mention about the introduction in the curriculum of the state board this uh, we were um, myself and madhusudan we were both in the state board uh, committee and uh, we had introduced 8th standard 9th standard and 10th standard but uh, then we had lot of teachers workshops to uh, train how how many more slides one more slide one more slide so now it is withdrawn so now there is no uh, uh, no no uh, astronomy covered in this and therefore uh, i feel that asi should do something about it i think it should be introduced in the school curriculum and nowadays we uh, generate shows with this digital thing so i don't have to tell much about it and uh, with so many planetariums spread across the country uh, there is lot of scope for reaching out to rural areas and so let there is lot of things to be done asi can take a lead here and can fill the gaps here and uh, uh, try to achieve something to make it reach to the public so that they are the new challenges we have to rival with the commercial cinema people the production cast and other things and then remember to add local flavors so that's all i wanted to say thank you uh thank thank you shailesh uh, you mentioned celebrities visiting planetarium uh, to attend the shows but uh, i know at least one story where celebrities help planetarium design the shows where uh, the first show of uh, mumbai planetarium the commentary was uh, were given by professor s h chitre and uh, dilip kumar was a uh, voice coach for him uh, for that commentary <laughs> no the the problem with the mobile uh, planetarium is that the uh, uh, space available is so small that the children remember more of the uncomfortable feeling they had inside the dome rather than enjoying the visuals this is unfortunately the feedback that we got and so i generally don't encourage uh, 
a mobile planetarium. So it's a very small tent and uh, gets heated up very fast. Uh, okay, thank you, uh, Shailaja. Uh, we will uh, go to the fourth speaker. Uh, our next speaker is Arvind Baranspe, and he is going to talk about uh, pre POEC outreach by SI members. Arvind? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay. I need to share uh, my screen. So let me do that. Actually, I don't really uh, just yeah, here. Can you see my uh, screen? Uh, yes, uh, it, it, is, it will appear, yes. Now we can see your screen. Okay, fine. Uh, oh boy. One second, uh, Aniket. Uh, I have an issue right now here. Okay, so basically uh, I what I wanted to uh, talk to you about is the ASI outreach. Uh, uh, particularly talking about the amateur astronomers. So let me begin by saying that the amateur astronomy activity in the country really got the boost after the total solar eclipse or around the total solar eclipse of 15, uh, 16 February, 1980. And at that time, Indian Institute of Astrophysics had uh, published this booklet called The Day of the Dark Sun. I think that was its name. And that became very important for, for uh, one simple reason that it was the eclipse took place uh, when the skies across the country were very uh, expected to be clear and remain clear. Uh, it was a very long eclipse, three minutes or so. Then it was near solar maxima. So the corona was well distributed and the totality track passed the um, major cities like Hyderabad and Calcutta and et cetera. Except that Doordarshan and Akashwani uh, played this uh, spoil sport and then war warned uh, people against the uh, Spida, uh, karte. One against the uh, observing the totals of the eclipses. Okay. What would now what follows is uh, my account of uh, outreach by ASI. Uh, Arvind, uh, you are, are you in the slide presentation mode? Because the slides are not move, moving. No, I'm not. I'm not. When I, I have only one or two slides, most of it is I'm just talking about. Okay. Okay. So uh, whenever there is a slide, I will click on that. Okay. Fine. Okay. So now. Uh, in 1979, I was in my final year of BSc in Bangalore, and I was also a member of Association of Bangalore Amateur Astronomers. So in addition to publishing booklet at that time, II astronomers, uh, mainly Bappu, Bhattacharya, Kapoor, Shivraman, Kiar Shivraman, wrote a lot of popular like, uh, articles as well as gave talks. And we members of Amateur Astronomy Association would actually go and attend almost all the talks. Uh, of course, at that time, there were these three magazines, um, that is the uh, um, Science Today, which was uh, Times of India publication, and then Science, um, Science Age, which was published from Nehru Center, which is closed after some time, and then Science Reporter, which continues. So all these magazines had special issues. And what these special issues had uh, underlined thing was that solar corona can be, is a polarized thing. And that caught our attention. Um, amateur astronomers in uh, Bangalore that had caught our attention and we thought that we could photograph the solar corona in polarized light. Now where to get the polarized sheet and there, that's where Indian Institute of Astrophysics came to help us and Dr. Shivraman suggested that I may write to Arvind Bhatnagar, uh, Dr. Arvind Bhatnagar at the Udaipur Solar Observatory, actually at that point in time it was called Vedshala and immediately by return post he sent us two sheets of two inches by two inches of polarized sheets. And we'd use those sheets and we had a wonderful camp. Actually, one of the persons in our group decided to do an experiment on um, the uh, electron density in the corona. And uh, these people, if, if I remember, some of you might know uh, two people from our group. And one is the Arjun Dev. Uh, one is Arjun Dev at NA, NOA and Madan Rao, who is at the Central uh, National Center for Biological Sciences. So we all went to a place nearby. We digged up a tent and uh, did this experiments, travel up our uh, eclipse experiments. Uh, Madan Rao's experiment was little too ambitious, but the color solar corona came in. And uh, ASI allowed me to present a paper on our experiments during the 1981 general body meeting at Ahmedabad. At that time, I was offered uh, 400 rupees for travel and registration was, uh, registration was waived. But since I had to be member of ASI to receive that money, so I was first made member by deducting the 
joining a membership fee, uh, well, that uh, membership sort of, uh, I believe it makes me uh, possibly not the youngest, but at least one of the youngest non-astronomer member of the uh, ASI. The point that I'm trying to make here is that even then, ASI was supporting activities by amateur astronomers, and that is uh, nearly 40 years ago. Now, soon after 1980 solar eclipse, Venu Papu invited many astronomers to discuss upcoming high altitude, uh, um, uh, high altitude observatory in Ladakh. And that time he judiciously invited uh, amateur ast astronomers to participate and try to see if these people can volunteer. Now from Bangalore, if we move to about 800 or so kilometers Northwest, then we know that uh, Professor Jayant Narlikar has been doing a wonderful uh, outreach activities. It was a pan-India effort. And then he um, got this uh, Carl Sagan's cosmos in, uh, to India through Doordarshan. And it was a very popular thing. And that generated large amount of, a large number of uh, amateur astronomers. Later on, when he initiated uh, uh, Ayuka, the public outreach became one of its main activity. But before I go to Ayuka, let me also tell you about a few individuals who did as a member of ASI, uh, uh, did some activities. One is that father and son uh, team, that is BBS Rao and his son BSC Rao. Both of them did a good lot of uh, amateur telescope making and uh, take a, amateur telescope making activities in Bangalore and Madras. And BSC Rao also was instrumental in uh, starting the Bangalore Association. Now, uh, 10th of March, 77, we had this um, uh, occultation of a star by Uranus and the rings of Uranus were dis uh, discovered, and which was a major talk of the town. And Professor Bhattacharya had given a talk. And naturally, amateur astronomers in Bangalore, we uh, got into observing occ occultations. At the same time, uh, at VITM, uh, VITM has, had given us a room, uh, amateur astronomers, and what Shailaja had just talked about, that is where we used to make actually telescope. Now, around this time, I had joined Indian Institute of Astrophysics in their photographic lab. My boss was Jagdev Singh, and uh, uh, he allowed me to make prints for the exhibition of uh, amateur astronomers. And uh, uh, let me just uh, share this slide. Okay, so this is the uh, exhibition. And then here is this occultation equipment, which we have managed to actually put together to act, uh, try to record, but uh, that, that never worked. But it was a good, good effort on our part, I mean, uh, I would say, uh, as an amateur astronomer now looking back in time. Another person I would like to mention here is that one Shakuntala Nene from Rajkot. She was an NCC instructor, never married, and she actually initiated a good lot of uh, amateur activity in Rajkot. Then Professor Devdas's name has been um, taken earlier, and uh, he was a great telescope maker, uh, made his uh, um, Newtonian telescope. And uh, what was great about him is that many a times he went out of his way to help people. Then in Mumbai, uh, Raju Patel, again a member of uh, ASI, was groomed by Arvind Bhatnagar in telescope making. And he installed a good uh, celiostat at Nehru Planetarium about for exactly 40 years ago, and uh, which is still functional. And another person which I would like to take uh, remind people is that Ajay Talwar, who trained himself as an um, uh, astrophotographer and has been doing wonderful, uh, making some wonderful pictures. Now, there are far too many people to take names, so I won't go into that, but go back to Bangalore and what uh, uh, Kapoor has said about the museum, I would like to tell you that the museum, we were invited, the uh, junior members of uh, staff of IIA were invited to go and man the uh, museum at that time. And I was very happy to go to the museum because our work would start at 10 o'clock, get over by one o'clock, have a lunch, go down to Kodaikana Lake for doing boating, come back and then take a little nap and then go and observe. Kodaikana had a beautiful site and the telescope was at my disposal so I could observe. Now, one of the slides which are uh, shown by people is that the uh, three-inch telescope, which was made by CSIO, that is Scientific Instru Instruments Organization Chandigarh, and it was developed in collaboration with Indian Institute of Astrophysics. It was a beautiful uh, refracting telescope mounted on an equatorial mount with slow motion knob. And this telescope was used by a large number of people, except that 
uh, uh, sorry, it was distributed to large number of institutions across the country, except that these telescope boxes were never opened by majority of them. I have seen some boxes going to village schools and see, and the reason that was given is that if you open and something goes wrong, I will have to pay for it. So the boxes were just lying there. Another activity which uh, IIS supported and uh, later on helped me also, and that is we started teaching people how to make telescopes. So we used to have in uh, VITM uh, telescope making workshop and large number of people came and uh, made their uh, mirrors. They grounded, polished, figure their mirrors. And Indian Institute of Astrophysics helped us in aluminizing the mirror. So one of us would take the telescope, the uh, completed figured mirror to Kavlur, get it um, aluminized and bring it back. Now I shift to Ayuka in 1991, where I joined, started working with uh, Sham Tandon, and we built a low cost solid state photometer for amateur astronomers. By the way, the first prototype that was made and tested by two amateur astronomers, and I'm sure you know of them, at least one person is here right now in the uh, audience, is Yogesh Vardekar and Niranjan Sambhos. So this particular uh, night sky photometer we developed and uh, a large number of people had used this photometer. Then uh, Ayuka- uh, Two minutes. Okay, so now I will come down to one particular uh, uh, instance of talking about how uh, 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 Ayuka had helped. And that is, we also had uh, supported uh, amateur astronomers, which is uh, so one Nilesh Puntambekar who made the Celiostat working under Shomachodri, Parag Devtare made liquid mirror telescope. And uh, pointing it out to you, this uh, Trupti Ranka, she got the YAM best pre PhD entry. She observed with us the uh, 44 um, booties, which is a short period, uh, it's a variable star. Now, what I would like to actually end, um, uh, end here is that. Uh, some of the things which we uh, uh, talk very regularly, and that is uh, the zero shadow day. The zero, zero shadow day has been a, a zero, zero shadow day is a completely my creation, and I would like to put this on record today. And I, I would like to give you a little history of that. And the history is that uh, in uh, um, uh, 2008, I was teaching a group of students, uh, the school students, about the uh, solar system, and we realized that uh, um, on uh, 14th of May, 2008, the declination of sun would equal the latitude of uh, uh, Pune. And this is how we actually demonstrated the complete circular shadow. And uh, next year, which was the International Year of Astronomy, so I made this um, uh, uh, press release. Many th uh, we thought of uh, talking about it, many uh, give this uh, particular uh, event many names. But finally, like a uh, day with no shadow and shadow loss day or something like that, but zero shadow day stuck on. So I'm just telling all of you that whenever you talk, please remember that this is completely Indian uh, concept. There, there has been no other such uh, activity elsewhere in the world. And please do remember that this, this concept had evolved in this century at Ayuka. And it would be nice if you can, uh, if you can continue to give credit to me. Lastly, I must admit that at Ayuka and now at Mumbai, we do have once in a while gender inequality. We have to say that, uh, as we say in uh, amateur wireless operator lingo, that we have more wires than OM. Uh, uh, we always uh, uh, say that irrespective of their gender, okay, oh, sorry, we always say that uh, females are uh, young ladies and uh, males are old men. That is the amateur wireless operator's gender. So often we have more number of girls in our group then boys are and uh, this is how the amateur activity uh, i would like to end by saying that much more observational work on the field needs to be carried out we needs to be supported and we will try and do that i think i will end here thank you thanks arvind okay uh, since we are uh, running late, late let me go to the last speaker uh, Arvind, you can stop sharing your screen. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So our uh, fifth speaker is uh, Shobhak Rajchodhari from Ayuka, and he is going to talk about the outreach sales in different institutions. Thank you very much. Thanks, Aniket. Actually, I'm going to talk about something else. I, I'll start with that. But I, I um, um, because the theme has been to do with the um, astronomy outreach, 
that um, ASI has been doing. Um, I thought I'd talk uh, more about um, the activities that um, the ASI did um, for science outreach and popularization uh, before the current uh, uh, POAC um, took over. And uh, um, so, and the story that I have here will concentrate some, uh, somewhat on, um, on, on something that you've been working on, and, uh, and that's the Olympiads. So um, I, um, um, as you know, um, um, Ayuka has a very important outreach activity, as, as Arvind talked about, started in the 1990s. Um, in Sirana's name was mentioned, uh, he was the person who put it together, brought um, not only outreach at Ayuga, but also connected it with the um, amateur community in India. He passed away in 96, and that's when uh, I took over at Ayuka the charge of science authorization uh, with Arvind uh, Paranjape uh, as uh, the main officer in charge. Uh, I'm I putting up some of these pictures to show how, even in the early 90s, Ayuka was one of the unique institutes to actually engage in uh, activities um, with school children, teachers, as well as um, uh, as well as the general public. I put a picture of mine there um, conducting the annual quiz from uh, back from 1996 because that is going to become important in the story later on. Uh, right now, of course, the last in-person Science Day um, celebrations we had in Ayuka had 20 people. <coughs> attend Ayuka in a single day. So this kind of shows um, the, the kind of demand that people have. And, and we have uh, here uh, on that day, for example, 2020, people coming from as far as uh, Aurangabad and Nagpur coming to. So, um, so that is the, the kind of stuff that we do. But today's story is not about Ayuka. Today's story is about ASI and how ASI engaged um, in science popularization activities all over the country in the 1990s. And uh, I must say that the current POAC committee is doing a fantastic job, absolutely fantastic job all over the country and is uh, notable all over the world. Um, but the, 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 the kind of activity, this kind of activity was conceived so long ago and uh, ASI took part in it that uh, then uh, stopped for some reason uh, and then was revived uh, in the current POAC in 2014. So um, when Dr. Kapahi was president in Ajit's talk, you heard um, in 97, the new committee that took over um, had uh, Dr. Kapahi as president and Dipankar Bhattacharya was the secretary. Among the councillors was Dr. Kasturi Rangan, very important as the past president. And I was part of that council, along with Piyush Pandey, who was the director of the Calcutta Birla Planetarium, played a very important role in this whole story um, and, and, and various others. So um, there, uh, in this particular, uh, and then of course, Dr. Um, uh, Kapahi passed away very suddenly in, uh, in 99 at the age of, age of 55, uh, but he had taken this amazing initiative and Dr. Ram Sagar became the president and continued to support this activity uh, with uh, Dr. Gopal Krishna as vice president. This is the question that Ajit had asked earlier. Um, at this meeting in uh, 97, um, the, um, among the council, the very interesting thing, the first meeting of the council um, uh, Dr. Papai said, we need um, uh, an activity in science popularization and communication. I was, as council member, made in charge because, as I showed you, uh, Ayuka already had that kind of activity already ongoing, and it was considered that I, I, could, um, I, I could continue that nationwide as uh, uh, generalize Ayuka's activities to ASI. So that, that was the reason I took over um, for a very brief period. Um, uh, the ASI's uh, popularization activities. And well, the initiatives that were taken was essentially to, um, uh, to generalize our work with the amateurs to all over India. For a, for a couple of years, I was actually president of the Amateur Astronomy Association of India uh, and uh, the, working with about 100 uh, amateur astronomy groups. Uh, the Planetarium Community of India uh, came, uh, as uh, Shailaja mentioned earlier, um, we visited various planetariums and they came in, to, in, in this activity very interestingly, as I will say in a minute. Every meeting, council meeting, we had a science uh, SIPOP report that had to be given and it was taken very, very seriously uh, at that time. The Olympiad Committee had various people that was brought in. So very interestingly, I, I'm going to talk the rest, rest of it, talk about the Olympiad, uh, how the Olymp India's uh, and participation in the International Olympiads as well as the National Astronomy Olympiad in the country started. In 97, Colonel Singh was mentioned, amazing character. 
um, was an ASI member, but also um, a, a school teacher in, in Lucknow. He sent, at uh, that time there was an Olympia that was held, the IAO, in the ex-USSR countries, and um, um, it, uh, anybody could participate, but if the country did not participate, any city could participate or any school could participate. So he took his team from Lucknow, to a team to, um, um, to uh, uh, Moscow to participate in this, uh, in this Olympiad and uh, won a bronze. We heard of that and, and in that uh, um, a meeting in the ASI, uh, in the PRL meeting, it was mentioned. And it was mentioned in the general body meeting, uh, and I think it's minuted, that we should invite Colonel Singh to figure out how we can help India participate in the International Olympiad. And Colonel Singh was then invited to the meeting, uh, the first meeting of the council, and we worked with him. And the next year in Kiev, very wonderful uh, con context now where the war is going on, um, the, the next uh, Olympiad was held in 98, and a joint Pune Lucknow team was sent. And there, how, how we did was, we took that, the, that quiz uh, the thing I showed, the Ayuka um, Science Day quiz. We selected people from um, um, the, the quiz uh, and activities. Lucknow gave, brought some of its best students. We took some of the best students. Varun Bhalera was one of these students. And, uh, um, and we put them together and we had a two week uh, camp in Ayuka with these people training and we trained them. <clears throat> and then from 99, and, and then they, as, as I'll, I'll show you, they went to, uh, to, to Moscow and, um, and uh, sorry, uh, to Kiev and won amazing prizes. Um, and, and I'll tell you in a minute. So that encouraged us to have a national uh, astronomy Olympiad. And this was held to 20 planetariums in the country. The question paper was prepared with, in association with Arvind Kumar at, at IPTA. And uh, 30 students were chosen. They were trained at a camp at Khandala, paid for totally by the ASI. So this was an ASI activity. And ASI paid for the travel and accommodation in Khandala, lovely place. And we had a three week long camp in which we trained these students, sent them to uh, the Olympia. And uh, from the following year uh, at Nehru Science Center, this uh, training was started till um, uh, later on in 2004, HBCAC took over, right? Then the annual, the, the, uh, the, the camp was funded by the ASI, but we went to ISRO and because Dr. Kasu Rangan was, was our council member, uh, ex-president, as well as Dipankar Bhattacharya took an amazing initiative to go and secure this uh, funds from ISRO from then on every year, except for one year, ISRO funded the international travel of the Olympiad team. So this was a totally ASI initiative, which became amazing. So this was the first one, 98, uh, in which um, the Pune Lucknow team went. And uh, these were the kinds of questions they, they had, amazing. And we realized when the team went that they had textbooks in school that, um, that they read. So the team this year, which was led by Mayim Bhaiya, uh, uh, brought back the book from which the local um, uh, team trained. This book was then translated by Margarita Safanova here in Ayuka um, um, into English. And later Priya Hassan also took part in this. And, and so this entire book we translated and used it in our training. So we tried to beat them at their game. That was the wonderful thing. And this is why the Indian team was so successful. Later on, uh, my, uh, Aniket has, has compiled some of these questions into his book, um, which of course the HBCS has been doing in an amazing way. Now, of course, there are two Olympiads. In 99, when the national team went after national Olympia training in, uh, in uh, Kandala, um, to, um, um, to uh, the, so this was the Kiev one, I'm sorry. And uh, this was the, in Crimea and Kiev together. Um, the politics, the geopolitics is very interesting now. Um, uh, Varun and Mayank got um, uh, gold medals um, and, uh, um, and, and uh, um, silver medals and, and bronze medals. And, and, uh, and, and some of these pictures are on their website. I was looking for pictures. We don't have any pictures of the Kandala camp anymore. I don't know why, because we didn't have mobile phones. We didn't take pictures. Uh, and um, 99, the, the, it became a national um, story. You can see Jotsna and Mayank went with the team to Kiev and it was trained um, here, as I said, in, uh, in, in Kandala. And they brought back um, um, two gold medals and several bronze and silvers. 
Um, and the newspapers were extremely happy about this, and uh, um, it was everywhere, and, the, it, and it was seen as a success of the ASI. The following year in Nizhny Arkis, in 2000, where uh, they were, um, this entire team, we then expanded, the training team was expanded, we spent quite a lot of uh, time with these people in, at the Nehru Center in, uh, in, uh, um, in Bombay. Um, India came, um, uh, India got the highest number of medals and became champions. And you can see the four gold medals, uh, sorry, three gold medals, and you can see the largest number of medals. This is the first time India was champion in, at an international astronomy Olympiad. And this was again funded by ABSI and ISRO. So I just wanted to bring um, back these memories of, um, of how the Olympiad took place. And, and that in there, the planetariums played a very, very important role because the regional tests were held at the planetariums all over the country. Some of these planetariums were led by very important people, Vishweshwara and then Shailaja in Bangalore, in Calcutta, Piyush Pandey, and then, um, and then in Hyderabad, Siddharth, uh, in Bombay, uh, it was uh, uh, J.J. Rawal. And, and so all these people um, um, took their part in, in actually having these tests and, and the training is very, very important. Um, I, I'll just talk about one more thing that the ASI got very involved in. At, in 1999, UNESCO had a world conference in science in which um, um, 140 countries participated in Budapest and came up with these amazing resolutions that talked about the, the uh, scientists' uh, responsibility, not only uh, to, um, to be honest and also make sure women came into science and things like that and, and look at traditional science in various countries, but also it said any scientist, the main social responsibility is to make sure they communicate their work to the external, um, uh, uh, external community, the community at large, participatory science, very, very important. As a result, in London, there was a, a national, international meet of science communicators. And very interestingly, British Council approached the ASI to send a representative uh, to uh, participate in not any other science, came to astronomy because they thought that astronomy actually, and this is a, a very interesting thing that you should think about, science communication rests a lot on astronomers. So um, I was sent by the ASI, and the, the Ram Sagar was very, very, uh, um, uh, I was fortunate to, to be sponsored by Professor Ram Sagar to, to go to this, this meeting in which I gave one of the keynote lectures. And there, for the first time, I met people from, from South Africa who were doing this amazing work in the, in the, uh, in the, the shanty towns, as well as people from Europe, as well as all over the, uh, the world. And there we talked about, and the very interesting thing I found was that almost everybody was talking about the Kerala science movement. And uh, here you can see that in, even in my presentation, I talked about the work we did at Ayuka in terms of setting up a local science communication center but also the national movements that we have and in, including uh, things to do with the Kerala science movement and the science movement in Madhya Pradesh um, uh, uh, in, in, in schools and things like that. And, and uh, this, is, this is where um, I think it's very important that, that the ASI participated uh, in this international event as, uh, and, and, uh, and, uh, and, and um, uh, you know, essentially into discussions into a lot of, with a lot of the, uh, um, the community. Now, I, I, I wanted to bring this up for the following reason. I don't think this has been followed up. And uh, as, as the ASI POAC uh, is, is going into a, uh, an era of uh, in nationalizing, uh, taking, the, taking the, the, the outreach work all, all, over the, all over the country, we now have a center for astronomy education uh, between APCAC and IUCA here in India. Uh, a, a center for the IAU for astronomy education. And I think um, it is very important that ASI members play a very important role in astronomy education in India. And, uh, um, and uh, um, the fact that uh, there is a global movement going on on bringing astronomy to the people, um, uh, uh, it is very important for ASI members to individually take responsibility for, for this. And I, I, I just wanted to stop there. And, uh, and, and see whether we have discussions about this. Thank you. Thanks. So, uh, actually, I 
had a comment and maybe any of the speakers can respond, uh, not just uh, for Sumak, but uh, some names have been mentioned. Uh, uh, we mentioned Professor uh, Ishwishwara, we mentioned Ratna Shri. Uh, according to my own memory, when I was a student in 80s, one of the big, biggest outreach uh, effort, I would not say effort, but uh, really science was brought to homes through the Adudashi serial called Turning Point. Which and in which uh, some of the ASA, prominent ASI members were involved. Okay, Professor Yashpal was host, then Professor was host for, the, for several episodes. So uh, these people, then uh, Professor Rajesh Kochan was briefly mentioned. In fact, we were talking to him as uh, possibly as one of the speakers for this session, and we lost him just a few days back. So uh, just uh, uh, my question to panelists is that uh, these individual people who have done a lot of work, uh, why they, there wasn't a sustained follow-up to make it uh, uh, more uh, wide, widespread activity among, uh, uh, with, a, with the help of ASI or some institutes? It, yeah, maybe, I, I don't know. Uh, Arvind has his hand up and just his, uh, Arvind, maybe we can start with you. Okay, uh, actually, uh, my hand raised was uh, to put the record correct. Uh, that New English school, uh, Tilak Road in Pune, is the first planetarium, not the Calcutta planetarium. Now, what you just asked this question is why there are no, there are no continuous responses, that there were no particular person dedicated for it. Every, every astronomer or scientist did it by their own interest. It is only after Ayuka started uh, outreach activity and uh, a separate person was employed for it, I think that uh, took a different kind of a turn. But in the beginning, like, like total solar eclipse, uh, uh, Indian Institute of Astrophysics brought out that bulletin. But uh, during the 95 eclipse, there was a very interesting story. And that is the Ayuka supported another booklet by JVP, which, is the, which has been talked about as the oldest amateur astronomers association. It was night too soon. And that booklet was very similar to IIA. And again, it was distributed free of cost. But then there was a dedicated effort by a small group of people like uh, we were doing it. So I, I suppose that is the reason because professional astronomers have uh, something more to do other than uh, giving public talks and all that. Uh, yeah, I, can, hand up. Yes, I, can, I, can, I can respond. I mean, Jasit has a hand up for comment, but I, I, I thought, uh, okay, Jasit, is your comment on uh, on my, my uh, presentation or for? Of, for this, uh, go ahead. Uh, Shomak, I just had a, a comment and a request, essentially. Uh, you, I think, uh, very correctly outlined the role of ASI in uh, starting Indian participation in uh, astronomy Olympiads. Yeah. Colonel JES uh, led the effort. In fact, he organized quite a few things in Lucknow. And uh, being in HRI, Allahabad, I was able to go and participate in some of those uh, programs. Uh, but what I wanted to add as a request was that the Executive Council at some stage had uh, uh, approved giving financial support, not a large amount, but a token uh, award to each of the people who are selected for the OCSC. And I think uh, given that we have given the ASI in, in the past has almost entirely funded the whole operation, uh, this is a fairly small commitment and uh, we should probably go and uh, revisit that and honor that from now on. Thanks very much. I mean, I, I need to, I mean, the thing is that the, the talk I gave uh, Jajit is entirely from memory and asking a few people. I I do not have access to the, the, the paperwork and the minutes of the ASI from that. And maybe we I should go and look at such things. And you would remember because you were secretary and then um, and, and uh, um, of the ASI and what resolutions have been taken. I think we should um, request the current, uh, the, the committee uh, and the secretary to look at um, um, the history of, uh, um, you know, the uh, um, ASI's uh, participation in the Olympiad and, and, and figure out what commitments were made and we should actually certainly continue this. Thanks. Uh, so um, you, you wanted to- I, just, I was just, I was, I, 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 oh, the thing is that today's session was kind of patchy because we, we each picked uh, various aspects to talk about the uh, wonderful talks on the planetarium, on, on, on individual activities and things like that. 
but what you raised is a very important question. I wish the the talks had uh, there was one talk on um, yeah, outreach uh, um, done in general uh, through the media, and this is why we didn't mention people like uh, Professor Yashpal and Professor Nalika. Uh, I mean. Professor Nalika won the Kalinga Award for uh, science popularization. Not many people in India have, have won this. And, um, and, and it was because of his, uh, uh, this kind of uh, activities nationwide and in the media. And I can say from myself that in the time when there was just a Dudashan channels and no other channels, and when I was uh, in school and college, um, uh, Professor Yashpal and Professor Nalika's uh, programs made a huge impact on, on us. Uh, and uh, um, they were the only things that we could do. So I think this needs to be documented and, and, uh, the, and not many people know uh, um, the, the giants of popularization in the country in the, those days. Um, this, of course, as you point out, in the media has not been taken up. You have Shah Rukh Khan's TED Talks, but um, um, the, the current TV channels do not absolutely pay any attention to science. And uh, um, I don't know whether the ASI can, can play a role in, uh, in uh, bringing um, astronomy. As I said, it's, astronomy is considered to be the motivator in science popularization. Not many people out there would understand about nanosciences uh, uh, given in a popular manner. But uh, astronomy is something that has popular appeal. And maybe the uh, ASI could try and influence the media to, to have more astronomy in the media. Yeah. Just uh, one comment. Uh, I uh, following what Shomak said, I wonder if there is a SI archive or if there is a time to actually start something like this with the certain sections like outreach, but history and I mean, this achievements, but maybe this is something to, to, to be taken up, a SI archive. I, th I think that is a very good idea. We, we should have archives at some location where yeah, see her. Uh, so, I just I, I, I agree with the comment. Okay, so uh, uh, just respond commenting on the point which uh, Shomak uh, discussed that you know uh, current media doesn't show any particular interest in science, uh, but we should also think about and we have been do doing a little bit of social media work, but we should also think about. Uh, things which are popular with the younger generation. So, for example, the National Public Radio in the US, NPR, has the economics podcast, right? And economics traditionally is extremely boring, but they started their own TikTok, uh, you know, short clips which demonstrate uh, economic concepts, why something is important, what are inflation cycles, and so on, right? And uh, there are YouTube channels like Minute Physics which describe uh, things. We can do that with Instagram reels or whatever. I, I don't, I don't follow these trends, but we should. We probably should keep an eye out on what is what what uh, media teenagers are consuming, and we should reach out to them in the language that they understand. So it might make sense to you know do that, do that kind of a thing. Of course, yes, you want to become an influencer. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I don't want to. I it should become an influencer. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that is a good idea, and I think uh, instead of we uh, in the wrong age group trying to learn new things, we should call collaborative people like Cosmic Vata group uh, to do do this better. And, and the students will actually know the students will do this better. Yep, in the back there. Yeah, so I have a very simple question. So uh, when we talk of uh, popularization, uh, it's easy to popularize a common a field, say, for example, just neutron stars. So if I have to, but if I have to talk about uh, my own very uh, narrow PhD topic, and then if I have to popularize the theme of my PhD topic, uh, that's a difficult challenge. So how do we uh, learn that or if there is, yeah, and, and means how do we contact someone who can uh, means who can tell us that this is how means I know there is no steps as such, but uh, I don't know. I feel I feel it's very important that we 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 get we we know how to make our own PhD topic itself. Aniket, I would like to say something about the archive, which uh, 
Yeah, uh, Arvind, can I just respond to uh, yeah. what was raised just now? Yeah, please. So I just saw that uh, I think it is SERB. They are kind of conducting some workshops for science communication, and then they also have this uh, Absar uh, yes, yes, program okay. and uh, things like that. Yeah. So I think you people should be on the lookout yes, yes, for that. Yes, yes, we are. I'm aware of that, but then yeah. I'm talking about in the in the uh, training part. So exactly, so, yes. Uh, yeah, so I mean, this is one of the things that we do plan to have as a part of our ASI 50 um, activities, which uh, I think was mentioned by uh, Divya from the capacity building, where we did think of this to have workshops. And probably we can look at, uh, you know, roping in people from the DST media cell and uh, Vikyan Prasad who can conduct workshops for this. This is a good thing. Actually, just to add to that, uh, within POC also, we have been discussing some, not entire POC, but some members, uh, but probably we have expertise within POC to do uh, such workshops, especially we saw some of the people who are trying to, uh, genuinely trying to make good effort in writing, uh, for our uh, competition, like that. but they need some more guidance. So probably at some point, uh, ASI can organize a science writing work workshop. Yes, Divya. Yeah, like Anupama said, that is, I mean, so there are various aspirational goals which we have, right, which we don't necessarily know right now how to meet, but that is, those are desires. So it is in those desires that certainly listed that we do want to teach our members and especially younger members good science communication skills. I just wanted to highlight Cosmic Varta once again, and I just wanted to say that if all of us who are writing papers if you work with them to say that, okay, here is my paper. If you find me somebody to summarize it, they don't like you to summarize your own paper. They want somebody else to summarize your paper and you volunteer for them to summarize somebody else's paper. Without that, it, it won't work, right? So you do that and that tells you how to write about something in a manner which is sufficiently non-technical that like somebody else would understand that. That's one point. Another point I wanted to make is that we've managed to get some traction with some All India radio stations. And if we can produce content with for them, they are also willing to get it translated to various other languages and spread. So that is one channel where we might be able to do something. Uh, we, before you, I just want to go back to Arvind. Arvind, you had a comment about archives. Uh, that is correct. Uh, before, when this particular session was announced, we also thought that we will not be able to cover entire uh, outreach and so we thought that we could just like uh, priya had done it we could keep a um, google page and uh, people can give their submission in the google page and then finally we can compile that so that was one thing and uh, this the uh, i don't know who said that my phd work but um, my personal experience is that every time at iuka whenever i have given press release they printed verbatim i think at certain ex experience in writing this uh, press notes so if you send me your uh, gist of your PhD thesis or whatever you would like to get into the paper, uh, send it to me. I have a column which is running. I will add into that and give you uh, with your name, etc. That's it. Thank you. Uh, he would like to respond. Actually, it's not about the press release as such. So if I have to even talk to my fellow colleague from other field, I have to go back to where where all it starts, like the stellar deaths and then and, and then go to the problem so i can talk about neutron stars and i can popularize neutron stars but if i have to go to the specific problem then it becomes very difficult at least for me tell me the story i will help you out okay yeah thank you i'll, I'll continue okay. there. thank you uh, yeah so i was i was thinking of the, the practical aspects of poc moving forward so in the nation we have uh, multiple astronomy institutes which have now somewhat mature outreach programs and offices um, which have their own resources which have their own funding which are not insignificant now when we come to asi poec uh, we have a very wide reach uh, to all the institutions we can leverage the expertise from across institutions but the poec does not have enough resources in terms of an office or funding um, in many ways, moving forward to implement many of the ideas which have been thrown out today and which we have been mulling over for a long time implies that the ASI POC has to work hand in hand with established organizations which have outreach 
offices like IUCA, IAA, now Aries. I, I at least am aware of two directors sitting here. One, one is here next to me, Dipanka. There is one from up out there online. What are your perspectives on this? If the ASI POEC wants to be ambitious, blow up astronomy, education, and outreach in the country, would you be able to access the resources that you have? Would you have you with us? Can we do this together? Shoma, would you like to respond to that? It's certainly responsible. So of course, I mean, that is the, the entire mission. And uh, in Ayuka, I can tell you uh, my, my experience, but of course, the other directors can say other things. Uh, that is the direction in which we are going. We know that we have a, a network of 200 associates all over the country. Um, a lot of them um, um, have the potential of doing outreach um, in, a re in, regional, uh, in a region around them. Some of them do an amazing amount of work. The hand is up from Joe Jacob, who can talk about, he's one of our associates, who's done amazing outreach in his, in his region in Kerala. And, uh, and so to just uh, involve uh, many of our associates into doing uh, uh, the kind of stuff, and then to replicate some of the stuff that we've here done in here, and then, and then also learn from them what they're doing in their, in their regions. Neeraj in, at the IA has started uh, a lot of work in regional languages and things like that. Many of these, as I, as I said in my presentation, you see, I mean, Ayuka, our popularization started first, and then we could translate some of that into the ASI activities for the couple of years that I was in charge uh, in terms of doing it all over the country. Uh, you can take um, already some of the um, good practices that have happened in the institution, institutions in science popularization and outreach work and see whether some of these can become uh, be, can be done on the ASI platform. It doesn't matter who does it, but there are some things that the ASI will be able to do better than the individual institutions who work in their own uh, surroundings. Thanks, Deepankar. Yeah, just to add what uh, Shomok has said, you're absolutely right. So individual institutions, uh, you know, we can do a limited amount of things. So it will be very important to coordinate uh, all the institutional activities. And also I will go one more step with the Gyan Prasad, with the Sros Outreach Week. So this is, uh, we are not doing it. In fact, incidentally, uh, not many people, we are, probably you are aware, Dr. Archita from Vigyan Prasad Media Cell, I actually invited her to attend this uh, ASI and she was here for the last two days. Incidentally, she identified three undergraduate students for this workshop, which you're referring to. She has already invited them to Delhi for training them this purpose. So she was mentioning that this is, uh, they're very much interested to do that and uh, catch them young, you know, you have to, and she clearly told that, you know, senior uh, astrophysicists or astronomers, not all of them are good orators. They can't do outreach. So we have to know our limitations. So uh, individual institutions, resources, including Manishri. In fact, I'm happy that uh, Virendra is here. He has been, I mean, this position we created for outreach, and he's also given a designation in the scientist, uh, scientist, uh, uh, you know, uh, cadre, so that he can move with his career as well. Uh, it's not limited. This is also, these are important elements. Sometimes, you know, people are hired, actually, Ajit pointed this out earlier as well. People are hired as a scientific officer and they get saturated. So uh, I think these are, again, technical issues which we have to address and which is possible if you have a, you know, uh, a qualified person like him, uh, he should be also able to progress in his career, just not, you know, identified as a separate outreach person, as a genuine scientist person, because he's also doing full time work uh, for the scientific community. So these are the some of the efforts I think uh, we have to be carefully policy wise we have to do, we have to connect with uh, other, uh, you know, resources. In fact, I probably point this out, uh, Shumakda rightly pointed out, uh, Dipankar Bhattacharya, at that point of time, I dug down majority of the amount of money what we have today was actually gathered at that point of time. They got lots of money from sponsors in different uh, industry partners and so on. So then, of course, it was, uh, Dr. Kasri Rangan was there also, and he helped uh, quite a bit. So I see the large amount of money, and we have not been able to do that subsequently. So, of course, there are other challenges for, for this, but unless we connect with bigger, uh, you know, organizations, and Ajit, I think, uh, today <laughs> pointed out rightly uh, to uh, bigger industry partners in initiating prize awards and things like that, we'll not be able to, you know, address the fund issues, 
but it is important to work together. And uh, POAC now, currently what I see is already having uh, the major players from all the individual institutions as well. Okay, we have three or four hands up. Uh, Joe, your hand is up for a long time, so you can... Uh... Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Aniket. I, I just, uh, I, my hand was raised at the time when uh, one of the participants were mentioning to, uh, or uh, uh, he was asking uh, about how to start with popularization. Then I just uh, thought of uh, suggesting to him, like uh, the uh, the language and the story development in the case of uh, astronomy picture of the day, as well as uh, the astronomy picture of the month done by Neeraj, maybe, maybe a guidance for him, how to start with the, uh, developing the ideas, how to start it and uh, uh, from the very beginning and uh, progress and uh, uh, give a picture, a full picture in the uh, in a language uh, which is understandable to anybody. So that was the point which I just wanted to mention over there. And since uh, Shamuk uh, did, say, uh, did say about some of the activities which we conduct in the region, I just uh, uh, take one minute to uh, say one of the uh, about the one of the educational activities which we started with during the time of the pandemic. At that time, there was a lot of lot of difficulty. Uh, joke, uh, joke. Uh, if uh, if you can just uh, type your uh, message in the chat, it will be better because we have several more comments. Okay, well, no problem, no problem. I, I also this is not uh, uh, something which uh, needed to be told since Shomak mentioned only. I just wanted to tell. Okay, I will type it. Okay, fine. Thank you, Aniket. Thanks. Uh, Ananda. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. I have uh, two short and uh, to the point comment. Uh, one thing is uh, research institutes in res research and education in university and outreach from planetaria. This should be connected by one simple step that we create a small section of notice board. In every planetarium, they communicate something from the research institute so that public actually come to know a updated information from the research institute. What is astronomy happening from Indian astronomy? This is one point. I tried, but I have not succeeded really. Second thing is, uh, uh, second thing is, what is that? Outreach related, sort outreach. The research institute director, if they want to really think, we have not actually appointed people that is wrong we have started appointing people for outreach but what we have not focused yet is people with the right technical skill so probably science animation that can create beautiful pictures beautiful animation if that we can do then only it will reach masses thank you okay thanks there are two more comments one from back there Oh, hi, so this is kind of a tangent and hearkening back to something which uh, Professor Hassan said earlier in her talk. So um, I am a student which actually benefited from some of her work, uh, and she might not know about this, but uh, so uh, our, our college started a course in astrophysics, a master's course in astrophysics like three years ago, and I was in the first batch of that course. And our college had just a couple of professors who could teach astrophysics at that time. And at that time, Professor Hassan's video was online, which had really good Python tutorials on basics of astrophysics and how to use AstroPy, how, how to use IRF and tutorials like that were extremely useful. And because uh, they were like, it, it was like democratizing tools, which say, uh, say students from uh, research institutes had um, to us because we did not have as master students in small colleges, the resources to uh, say, say networks like say older PhD students or older seniors who could teach us those techniques. And Priya Hassan's, uh, uh, videos online were incredibly useful so uh, if she's still around i'd like to uh, like perhaps uh, prompt her to elaborate on what her uh, idea of disseminating those videos were because uh, right now I, I i can tell you for a fact that about 60 students in my program so far have benefited from uh, your uh, tutorials especially on uh, astrophy can you give a very short uh, reply yeah so basically uh, i forgot your name what's your name uh, i'm neil Okay, so Neil, uh, so obviously, like you understood, the purpose was to teach tools to students who do not know it, because if they learn the tool, then they can, you know, run the software and do the stuff. So that was the basic idea, so that people just learn the software and uh, they can use it. Yeah. Thanks. Last and comment. So the videos are all there. Even now, people can access them and watch the videos and learn. Right. Yeah. Thank you, Bria. Yeah. Uh, hi, we just 
uh, we at RRI just organized the uh, science day and it was there was huge response and everybody wants to be an astronomer. So my question, my question was that even when you have the best intentions in mind, uh, the motivations are not clear. Like, do you want all amateur astronomers to be professional astronomers? Do you want everyone to do PhD in astronomy? Do you have those kinds of seats? So we all know that so many people I, uh, do PhD in astronomy, but they don't find any postdoc. Uh, they, they are not able to pursue it. Very minuscule percentage goes, goes ahead. So, uh, so do we want to encourage every? Do we have those kind of prospects? So, uh, we are telling about that. Yes, this is a very interesting field, but it also uh, has to look uh, has to have those kind of future prospects that you want such a large number to be doing PhD. To be, uh, do we? Uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah. So that was my main point. That motivation sometimes is not clear even when you have the best intentions that astronomy for example i love astronomy and many i know many people do that but uh, what what to do about it <laughs> yeah uh, let me take liberty with uh, an answer on behalf of speakers uh, so obviously what you are saying is true uh, every program you go there will be 300 students and all of them will get excited about astronomy and uh, in no realistic sense, you you really reach a scale where everybody will get a job as a professional astronomer. But astronomy should not be seen as a in isolation. Astronomy is a vehicle to attract people towards science. So after getting excited about science, they may actually end up working in some physics or even chemistry or biology. Doesn't, doesn't matter. Astronomy is something which kids are naturally curious about. So. By that curiosity, you uh, get the hook to science. Is the first thing. Second thing, it is not even given the scale of India. Uh, you will not even find enough jobs for each and every kid who is excited about uh, in, in in all sciences together. But if you can teach how astronomy works, how we think as astronomers, as scientists, that scientific thinking which we, we teach the kids, that will be useful for them even if they don't take up job in science. So we, if by teaching them about astronomy, we tell indirectly send a message to stay away from astrology that itself is a big deal. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to uh, make like again. <laughs> Can I answer? Can I just add a little bit to what Aniket said and also to support her point? I think there is some validity in what she says in the sense that, you know, every year we, we churn out some number of PhD students out of which something like maybe 10% or 15% eventually would manage to get a permanent job back in India if they wish to, right? Uh, and this is an issue that I had brought out. I think, I don't know, Anupama would remember if she's here. So, a uh, few years back in the EC, that the Astronomy Society of India should do much more effective advocacy for hiring uh, astronomer, astronomy faculties in other institutes, new institutions like IITs and ISIS, which the ASI has not done. And I think this is a major failure on part of the ASI. I'm sorry to say this in a forum sitting in ASI, but I strongly believe that. And I think this is something that we have to start. We have to liaise up with directors of various general big institutions which employ 500 faculty 600 faculty not small astro institutes right that is where the future is we need to work and effectively advocate for astronomy with them this is fundamentally important yeah i i wanted to answer uh, the question by ananda that uh, the planetarium should be doing something for the science that is uh, science results that are uh, produced from india Fortunately for me, I had easy access to Indian Institute of Astrophysics, so I could get visuals and uh, display them as posters immediately. But what we need today is exactly the opposite. Namely, we want beautiful videos. If videos are made available to us, uh, we have a small five-minute capsule, which we show be just before the uh, main program where we showcase the highlights. For example, when 105 satellites were launched from ISRO, we made a nice program of that and that was very well appreciated. So similar things, we need input from the research institutes and they should be quick in supplying these high quality videos. The videos will have to be really high quality. 
and uh, only when they are made available we will be able to showcase them in the planetarium domes that is very important and i think all the research institutes please note this and uh, make it a point to supply the needed videos to the nearest planetarium so that it can be displayed there thank you thanks yeah. thank you so uh, i wanted to respond to what you said a bit earlier so uh, it's along the lines of what aniket said that the idea is to sort of spread scientific temper and get them excited and once you're excited you will find your way we are not really trying to say that you come to astronomy and we promise you a job i also take the point which the uh, the bindu just made about advocacy at various institutions but i think there will never be a time where all the people who do phd's in astronomy will find jobs in astronomy the other thing equally important thing which we have to do is to make sure that our training as well as our people are well aware for avenues for astronomy phd's outside astronomy that's the beginning which we are just making now with our academy uh, industry academic academia and industry interaction thing but i think the bulk of the phd's would actually go there and talking to my friends who are who did phd's in astronomy but are now not in astronomy these guys are very highly regarded in their respective institutions they are regarded as problem solvers when the organization doesn't know what to do these are the people they go to so i think those opportunities we have to create and that mindset we have to create that you are a smart guy you can do whatever problem comes to you yeah uh, i think we will uh, end with dipakar's comment and others one then can be... line, okay one okay. Line. okay just one line that's that's okay <laughs> so online okay. participants so uh, the on the same line as ajit also mentioned in his talk that the big data science problem for example is not just for astronomy it's for the whole science community and the industry as well and that the uh, no data set is as large as astronomy data and you learn actually a lot of skills in that so that skill development is what uh, that's one example that i could think of immediately okay thanks arun by the way there is a five lines <laughs> i would i would add because both of them has said both of them have said more or less what i wanted to say in terms of the industry readiness of our phd students because this is the criticism which we are getting from the from the government is your phd students are not industry ready uh, because 75% of the students from the uk community in astronomy goes into industry we have to reduce that uh, probably number of years of phd and make the skill set more flexible for teaching positions for uh, you know industry positions and all that just to add uh, the what you were saying about uh, you know asi is not participating in sort of pushing expansion in other institutes or other uh, positions uh, across we are doing our individual basis i've been sitting in a lot of interviews uh, i've managed a couple of positions and i'm sure other ec members also doing that so it's happening that's how you see people in iits and uh, igs uh, isers uh, getting positions so it's happening but as a institution i don't think asi can do that Okay, I think. Yeah, I mean, well, as uh, that awareness can be brought in. Uh, awareness can be brought in so that the members of the senior ASIs can actively play, uh, take a role. Okay, thanks. With that note, I think we should end the session. Let's thank all the speakers again. Oh, see, Sita, Sita wanted to say something. Yeah. Only one sentence that uh, it's a chicken.